Back to Nets Republic. Real quick housekeeping before we go on with our condolences for Chicago because God, how the mighty have fallen, but that's not the hint there. Uh, real quick mail time with Sever. There's like this, 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 this weird like idea that like I don't like read like the comments or whatever. I do. I just, I just don't reply to them because this isn't my chat. Like, like I. I work for Nets Republic, but like, I'm not like Nets Republic. Like a lot of new people think like I am Nets Republic. No, I'm Sarah the Bond. So like, if it was my channel, I'd reply to your comments, but like, I'm not Nets Republic. So it's like, I don't want to like speak on behalf of a whole brand when it's just me. So real quick mail time with Sever, uh, to homie with 23 at the end of his name, who is like, uh, what is the Russell Crowe thing. Um, I, 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 I tend to forget that there are new people who have joined on who do not know all the references and such, which I think is funny for the people who have been here, but just for the sake of explaining, because you were nice enough to leave the comment, uh, the Russell Crowe thing is like when some, oh God, explaining the joke like makes it not funny anymore, but you know, let's just do it cool. So like when we beat a team that's injured, right? That's Russell Crowe. There's a South Park, oh, it's just ruining the joke, but there's a South Park episode where it's like Russell Crowe is out there like just beating people up and it's like somebody, and it's like, it's like, it's like, it happens because someone comes up to him and says, oh my God, it's Russell Crowe. And he's just like, oh my God, it's just a crap. Oh my God, it's just a crap. Oh my God, it's just a crap. You want to fight? And then he just starts like beating them up, right? So it's like, in this case, it's like, oh my God. We beat, um, we beat Golden State. And it's just like, yeah, but Kevin Durant wasn't healthy. Steph Curry wasn't healthy. Klay Thompson was hurt. And like Draymond was on like load management, right? So it's like, oh God, we beat the Warriors. We beat the Warriors. We beat the Warriors. We beat the Warriors. Beat the Warriors. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh my God, it's Russell Crowe, right? So that's, that's, that's the joke. I, I feel like explaining it makes it like, significantly less funny but there you go that's what russell crowe means in terms of nets republic yeah there you go anyway am i the only one who has like been going back just watching the hawks game over and over again just to see me just being a nuisance because i i i, I cannot stop watching the game like i'm just maybe i'm just conceited and i just love seeing myself on tv it's just like i just i just i just think it's hilarious like how dare Wesley Matthews not like me? But that's not here there. So let's get into the shenanigans. Um, we beat the Bulls. I don't consider this Russell Crowe because Lonzo's always hurt and they basically had everyone else. I would just like to legitimately like take a moment of silence, not just for the end of, you know, the, 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 the great run that CM Punk has been on because now he's PG Punk, but not just for CM Punk, but I want to just take a moment to have a moment of silence for the Chicago Bulls. For those of you who have been watching me since I was making these videos on my main channel, um, moment of silence, because I 1000% called this that let's go in the way back machine. So th the Bulls in 2021, right? Um, in 2021, Kyrie is a part-time player, all that shenanigans, right? Um, we had acquired James Harden, right? The rest of the league thought it was unfair and that we were ruining basketball, right? So then after that, we said, oh, you don't like that? We got something else for you. And we went and got LaMarcus Aldridge, right? Everybody was upset. And then we said, oh, you don't like that? We got something better. And we went and got Blake Griffin, right? And everybody was upset and everybody was like, oh my God, it's a super team. It's not fair. All these Hall of Famers on one team. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, right? So one of the teams that jumped out the window to try to compete with us for really no reason at all, was the Chicago Bulls. I believe they already had DeRozan at the time, I think. I'm pretty sure they had DeRozan in 2021. I'm pretty sure. But they went out and they acquired Vucevic from Orlando. And everybody was just like, oh my God. And, and if I'm getting the trade wrong, they did something. I'm pretty sure it was the Vooch trade. I'm pretty sure. And everybody was just like, oh my God, like you got to watch out for Chicago. They're serious. They've got this elite core. Oh my God, it's not fair, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I was one of maybe, maybe the only person on the entire internet who said they are nothing. They are trash. They are doing this because of us. There's nothing to be concerned about. 
And there was a lot of various trades like that, but the most flagrant and blatant example was the Chicago Bulls. They wanted to compete with us because they were like, oh, Brooklyn is like stacking up the Avengers. We got to compete too. And I found it laughable because it was just a splash for the sake of a splash. They gave up on, and like, is that when they got rid of Wendell Carter? I think that it, because I think that's how he got to Orlando. I'm pretty sure. Again, if I'm getting their transaction wrong, I don't care about Chicago. So, you know, if I'm getting the transaction wrong, I'm not sure. But like, they gave up on their young core and said, let's go get Vucevic, right? And now they have their little thing. And it's just like, everyone was like, oh no, here comes the Bulls. And I was like, oh no, they're still trash. Like nothing has changed. They're just making a trade just to make a trade to try to compete with, the, like the league was like literally in shambles trying to compete with us because a fully healthy roster, like I stand on, no one was beating us. We had a hypothetical starting lineup of James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin, and LaMarcus Aldridge. Like that's what I ran on 2K. We were unbeatable. We were unbeatable on paper. And the rest of the league was upset. You know, we had DeAndre Jordan coming off the bench. So we already had the Lob City reunion. Like a lot of people on paper was assuming that things were going to be too much. And everybody was talking all this trash. Like, okay, well, you know, you know, the Nets might have their thing. But, oh, when they get to Chicago, when they get to Chicago. And then we got to Chicago and all three of them played and we blew them off the court. DeAndre Bembry's going off. Like, we annihilated them. Was that DeAndre Bembry? I feel like it was. I can't remember. But I know all three of them played, and it was, like, one of the first times that they all played, and we, like, blew them off the court, and it wasn't even fair. Like, it was not even remotely close to fair. That was one of the few times that we were able to even get pictures of James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant together actually in uniform because in the fourth quarter, they were just laughing on the bench together. Also, side note, how did we let a whole two years go by and not have one photo shoot of the three of them? That's insanity. Like, God, they must have really hated each other, but that's not even there. Like, I just, I just, I have no respect for Chicago in the slightest. Like, shout out to Michael Jordan, shout out to Derrick Rose, but I have no respect for the current ensemble of talent that they have in Chicago. I've never taken them seriously. Not once have I ever said, oh, we gotta watch out for them. Like, I mess with DeMar DeRozan, but not because he's a bull, right? Zach Levine's a bum. Like, I've, I've never been impressed in the slightest by anything that they're doing. Aaron Gordon not only has a slam dunk championship that was allegedly yours, but um, see, 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 I'm getting history wrong. Was it, did they give it to Levine and that's why Aaron Gordon didn't do it? Or did they give it to Aaron Gordon and that's why Levine didn't do it? I'm trying to make a joke here, but maybe it's just no way. The point is, I don't care for Chicago. Not in the slightest. I think your deep dish pizza is overrated. Like there's, just, there's nothing interesting about you other than CM Punk. And now that he's PG Punk, you have nothing. You had Mike Hironica for a second, but I think he moved to Milwaukee. So, like, y'all have nothing of interest to me whatsoever. Your city's obnoxiously cold and always windy for some reason. You're in the Midwest. Like, there is nothing interesting about Chicago in the... Let me get my Joakim Noah off. Like, what's so great about Cleveland? Like, I just, I just, I just, I just want to make it clear that I just have no respect for you, and this is what you deserve. All you Chicago fans, this is what you deserve. You should have kept Derek. This is what you deserve. They started the game out. It was like, what, like 33 to like maybe seven. Like the Nets were really cold. We couldn't score. It was looking like it was going to be a blowout at the time. The Bulls were making it rain like Lil Wayne, if you will. From the three-point arc, we had no answer for it. Kobe White, this experiment that never seems to turn into anything. And his hair growth makes no sense to me because I swear it'll be like October and he's bald. Then it's Valentine's Day and his hair is to his shoulders. I don't understand his hair growth in the slightest, but that's not a here or there. Like there is nothing interesting about that team in the slightest. And you took our leftovers. You took our leftovers into Rosen. And like what happened to the Pat Bev thing? Is he still there? 
Like, seriously, the only thing that's legitimately interesting about the Bulls is, like, how DeMar DeRozan's daughter was, like, screaming so loud. Here's the question. Who screams louder in a packed arena? Is it me or DeMar DeRozan's daughter? I want to know who's screaming picked up on the mic more because I would venture to say I'm louder. That's all I'm going to say. My vocal projection is unmatched. That is all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. But there's there's just nothing interesting about Chicago in the slightest. I'm going to show you right now something that I can do that allegedly Lonzo can. And this might be ableist. This might be taking it too far. But this would not be a Sever the Bond broadcast on its Republic if I did not do something petty like this. Let me show you what that man probably can't do at this moment. I just like sat down for a second and stood back up. Now, not to be ableist, but it's just like, I mean, like, there's nothing interesting about y'all whatsoever. You trash. You are garbage. You are poo poo. And lottery teams that get to like be respected because of legacy always frustrate me, right? Like when the Knicks are trash, I don't think it's fair that they still get to be the Knicks because they're trash, right? Like nobody, nobody looks at the Pistons and says, you know, oh, this is a lottery team. Oh, but the lineage, Ben Wallace. You know what I mean? Like nobody does that. They are trash. So why does Chicago get a pass? Because they've got name brand talent? Like y'all will push the Hawks down the stairs up for 30 days and 30 nights. But Chicago gets to be respected because of Michael Jordan. Like, it's just nasty behavior. And just to put the nail in the coffin for how much I do not respect the Chicago Bulls in the slightest in this current moment, LeBron's better than Jordan. So, you know, if you, if you just need any more, there you go. And there you go. The GOAT is better than Michael Jordan. I know you don't want to hear it. I take Kobe over Michael Jordan. I, I, I I just, I just, I, I just, I just don't like y'all. I don't like y'all. I never have, and I never will. And the really fun part about this rant is one of my friends is like a hardcore Bulls fan, and I've, 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 I've literally just done this for like 15 minutes just to make him upset. But that's not here there. And any Bulls fans who are watching this, I would say it's all love, but I don't care. Have fun being cold. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it'll be like 50 degrees down here and I'm breaking out a hoodie but I know like up in Geneseo like y'all gotta be like real you know what I mean so it's just like how fun being next to Canada but that's not even there listen uh my distaste for the Bulls aside if you haven't noticed there's a lot of teams I like hate like 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 Bulls are right up there Pacers are right up there any team that Luca's on is right up there it's 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 a it's a gauntlet. The, it's just it's just, it's just add that onto the list of teams. Sever the bond does not like Chicago, right there, buddy. Just just just, just right there. I, I I saw what you did to Derek. I saw what you did to Tibbs. I'm not I'm not gonna forget that. But that's not even there. Anyway, um, the game started out uh pretty depressing. I thought we were gonna get blown out, but then they just decided enough is enough. I don't really credit Jacques Vaughn for any like adjustments whatsoever because the threes just started going in. It was literally just like the law of modern day basketball, which I mean is Jacques Vaughn's system. It's really just a discount uh, Mike D'Antoni Houston Rockets system and really a discount Steve Nash system. But uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same basic philosophy. Really the only difference between Steve Nash and... Um, I'd say Jacques Vaughn is the personnel. Like if we had this personnel when um like if we had this personnel when Steve Nash was the coach, we would have played the exact same way. It's that six seconds or less nonsense, like all that all that Phoenix stuff. Like that's that's literally what we're doing. You know, it's not as revolutionary as you know maybe we want to say it is for like branding purposes but like it's 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 the it's not it's not that difficult to see and i think like trying to 
package it as anything else, I, I, I think is a little silly at this point. Like for a couple of, I'd say for like two months, I've been sitting here trying to figure out like, what is Jacques doing? But it's literally just what Steve Nash was doing. And it's literally what they did in Houston when Harden was there. You know, and I think, I think the times where we played well during the Steve Nash era was probably predicated on the fact that we had Harden as a point guard who was able to run the exact same system. You know, there was some ISO in there. I'm sure Steve might not have wanted that. But again, if 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 Steve Nash had the personnel that we have right now, which is just an assortment of role players that could allegedly be the best player on a trash team, um, you see a more balanced scoring assault, right? You'll see a five minute stretch where Spencer Dinwiddie is like an all star, right? Then you'll see like a three minute stretch of Mikel Bridges is just on fire, right? Now Cam Johnson is starting to get to the act, which he's allegedly in cramping or something like that. Hopefully he's fine because I'm really tired of him being injured or whatever. But it's just like, like look anywhere. Like Royce O'Neal will just randomly catch fire, right? Lonnie Walker will be unconscious from three. Like it's just this balanced attack to where it's like you can double someone if you want but everyone on the court is capable of scoring and god help the league if dayron sharp starts hitting that three like it is not fair we are basically running like and and it's and, and it's so fascinating because during quarantine i did like this super deep dive on the houston rockets when they traded clint capella which he must have been livid i mean he was going to the bubble they sent him to atlanta he must have been livid but that's not even there but um the idea of like complete small ball just shooting as many threes as human as as as, as, as humanly possible either a layup or a three and get the shot off as quickly as possible like that philosophy with the right pieces is so dangerous now, obviously, when it doesn't work, it's really obvious. And it's like, wow, we really did. But like, that's when a Ben Simmons comes into play to force it to work. We get the drive in kicks or maybe Ben just says, OK, it's post up ISO time or something like that. You know, then you get into the cutting and, and, and more options come up. Right. That that that's where someone like a Ben Simmons is clutch. That's why in this run, we were saying, yeah, it's, it's crazy that this video like started all jokes and like now we're like the 20 minute mark. Now I'm really getting into the, an into the analytics, right? But that's why we're seeing during this current stretch with no Ben Simmons or whatever, that it's like it either really works or it doesn't because it's based on are the shots falling? because we don't have the ability to like create the offense with the ball handler or the playmaker without Ben Simmons, especially without a Dennis Smith Jr. Because Trenton Wofford is not a point guard. I don't know why we have him handling the ball. Lonnie Walker has clearly decided he's a shooting guard. So, you know, shout out to him for being sixth man of the year. So we don't have a backup point guard and Spencer is not a point guard. I know. He thinks he is. I know some of y'all thinks he is. He is not. When he went to Dallas, he was a shooting guard. When he was on the Nets the first time, he was a shooting guard. He gave it to D'Lo. Like, I just, I just, you know, before he got hurt on Christmas, he was a shooting guard next to Kyrie. Like, I just, I just, I don't understand. Like, if you really think back to it, we had Karis coming off the bench. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just like, I don't know where we got this idea that he's a point guard from, but sure, why not? So you're starting to see the only real flaw in this philosophy. I mean, we could have Royce O'Neal start, and, and this is also a feather in the cap of any time Royce O'Neal starts a game, we automatically win. I just want to throw that out there, but that's not even there. But um, you could have nights where you have Finney Smith at center, Royce O'Neal at the four, and we'll be just fine. Again, it depends on the talent, but like Vucevic and Patrick whoever, right, going up against Royce O'Neal and Finney Smith, and we not only defensively locked them down, but we shot them out the building. And Daron Sharp was shutting down Vooch. Like, you know, it's just like, I don't know how much of that is Chicago is trash and does not deserve any respect in the modern day. Or, 
you know, look at the potential of the Nets. And again, an offensive performance like we had the other night against Chicago, but add Cam Thomas to that and imagine how much more we would have been scoring. Right? Like, add Claxton back to the equation, who has ankle issues again, but I'm sure he's fine. I'm going to be positive. Right? And look at what's going to happen. Drop Ben Simmons in there, and we actually have someone to run the team because Jacques Vaughn literally just squats at the scorer's table and doesn't coach. Right? Like, imagine if we were at full strength, right? I think the potential of this team is very high. I think their lows are very, very low, but we just have to keep in mind that this is not full strength. You look at that Hawks game, if we were at, 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 at full superpowers, I don't think the Hawks are winning that game, I'll be honest with you. And I believe in Trey more than anyone, anyone watching this video, but that would not have been enough. It would not have been enough. You put, you put a Dennis with junior out there to like really like wear down a second unit just driving kick driving kick doesn't matter if he can hit a shot to save his life or not like i really truly believe that the ceiling of this team is a lot higher than maybe i was willing to admit and i don't like while i do think it is predicated on um and, and if i'm using predicated wrong i apologize but i do think that it it it, it, it relies heavily on Cam Thomas and Claxton, but Ben Simmons as well. But even without them, we're starting to see everyone else wake up and understand their roles. Now there's going to be the like the shuffle of a lifetime when Cam Thomas comes back, because now Cam Johnson's gonna get less shots and Mikel gets less shots. So it's like, I don't know what we're gonna do. I just know that Ben Simmons will figure it out. And even though I have no faith in Ben Simmons at all, and I think we should trade him or just get rid of him or whatever, I think when he comes back, he adds something incredible to the team, and it's just what we need. It might not be the Ben Simmons of old or any semblance of what Ben Simmons was, but what he is able to do currently, I think, fits perfectly in our system. And I am done crediting Jacques Vaughn for this, because I think this was all Steve Nash is doing. Now, again, you could say that, what is with, like... Like it is, it is 32 degrees outside. What leaves are you blowing? What lawn are you mowing? But it's 32 degrees, my guy. But well, that's not even there. Anyway, um, I think this is a Steve Nash philosophy. Now you could argue that it was Jacques Vaughn from the beginning because after Kenny left, it was Jacques in the bubble. And I'm not familiar with what Kenny was running, but you could argue this is all Jacques Vaughn, and then it was implemented a little more. Didn't we have Mike D'Antoni on the bench or something like that? Wasn't Mike D'Antoni on our coaching staff in 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 uh, 2021? Wasn't D'Antoni on the coaching staff? Wasn't he? Wasn't he? Didn't he get fired from... Didn't he get fired and then came to us? Wasn't Mike D'Antoni on our bench? I feel like Mike D'Antoni was on our bench. I might be thinking of someone else, but I feel like Mike D'Antoni was on our bench. Anyway, I am saying that there has been significant brain trust that has a reputation of running this type of offense other than Jacques Vaughn. So I don't want to give it all to him, but I do think this is the exact same system. We just have the players to run it. And that is what Sean Marks has been preaching for a while, that we just need like culture guys to fit in or whatever. Maybe that's what he meant by culture. Who knows? I would have never thought they'd trade Joe Harris. So maybe, maybe that's not what he meant by culture. I don't know. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. We got a game tonight. I don't know who we play. Don't think it matters. Um, I think it's like trying to see like what happens in the play-in tournament or some shenanigans like that you know i don't think that's canon but i'll see y'all eventually to cover tonight's game whoever it is we end up playing uh, the implications of the playing tournament i don't care i i, I could care less I'm, I'm i'm i am i am i am more fascinated as to like when does kenny omega get a a, a real title shot again like they're not like the like fake one you get on TV to put MJF over. Like I mean, like when does he really get like a real title shot again? That's not that's 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 what I'm more interested in. But that's not here to there. I'll see y'all later. Oh, I forgot to do the video game haul. Hold on, y'all. Wait. Ah, ah. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Mm -hmm.
I went Cyber Monday shopping, and um, and I'm that guy who is like, um, oh, can you price match online? Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I got. Hold on. Yeah. I have like swallowed a hair of some type, and it's literally killing me. But I'm gonna keep going with this video. Mm. Sorry about that. I did not. I did not mean to vomit on camera. That's my fault. Okay. Let me show you all the haul. Now y'all know I have been off this like entirely. But like what had happened was there's an arcade next to my job now, and they've got like this like NFL like Blitz '99 machine. And I was like, yo, this is kind of fun. I don't understand how the sport works, but it's kind of fun. So I folded and I got this. Yeah, the boycott's over, y'all. The boycott is over. Now, what my team is, I don't know. I haven't the slightest idea. I mean, I feel like Falcons by default, but maybe it's Giants. I don't know. Where's Odell? You know what I mean? Um, and then I got this. This is like the 2022 version or whatever, because like there's no sense in getting the current one because I feel like they're going to drop like the next one in like a couple months because like... The season's over, so they're probably gonna drop a new one. And I feel like Ron Acuna Jr. is gonna be on the cover. So it's like, why waste money on the new one if I don't even know if I'm gonna like it? So it's like, yeah. But anyway, I I don't know what the point of that was. I just I just wanted to show y'all that I got that. But anyway, I'll see y'all later. Uh, Seven the Bond, you're on That's Republic. Make sure y'all like the video. Y'all have been really nasty with the likes lately. Like 10 likes on the video is disgusting. Like the video. And I will see y'all whenever.